had been some who were offended of the fact that we remain in the curfew uh, in order to reduce the amount of, um, uh, let's say, they, 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 they're always available for nightlife and to have these frivolous pets and parties. We felt that the best way to manage that risk was to leave the, um, uh, the curfew in place. And so the, the protocols that we have in place, they are working. People need to respect them. And we need to remain vigilant and to remain disciplined, recognizing that the responsibility of an individual would not only have the individual, but would have other innocent people, include members of their family, their friends, and an entire nation. And there's a reason why we extended it, to give the executive the right to introduce these measures in order to protect the population. As you indicated, um, you know, we are dealing with a public health um, emergency. COVID um, is a serious infectious disease, and the executive must have the right to introduce measures, even unconventional measures, in order to manage that public health issue. Uh, so those who are arguing that um, it is unconventional or it is maybe unconstitutional to utilize those um, bracelets, uh, I think they're very wrong. But in any case, look, even if it was unconstitutional, which it is not, one would expect that we have to go the extra mile to protect the population. Now, we indicated uh, months ago, I believe as far back as uh, possibly May, uh, we said to the entire nation that the most vulnerable area or the greatest area of vulnerability, uh, you know, is the area, or let's say, um, yeah, is the area of um, returning nationals, or, or let's say the most vulnerable um, or the weakest point so far as the management of COVID is concerned, represents um, the quarantining of um, returning nationals, because generally speaking, they know stay at home. And we have had so many cases in which individuals would have um, gotten the right to quarantine at home. And the following day after they arrived from um, North America, I'm not aware that they have really returned from London per se, uh, but they may be in London as well, but definitely not to America for sure. You find them out shopping, you at the banks, and literally just running the risk of um, spreading COVID. So it is clear that we cannot um, rely on them uh, to be totally responsible and we have to have some monitoring mechanism. Uh, the contact tracers, they've been trying their best to stay in touch with them. But when you have two, 300 people uh, you know, in quarantine, self-quarantine, for the contact tracers to keep in touch with them 24-7 a day, that's virtually impossible. And even if you were to use police officers to uh, stay um, outside um, of, of, their, of their doors, uh, of their homes, as some people suggest, again, we would not have enough police officers to monitor them. So using the technology, the bracelets, and uh, those bracelets uh, will be placed on the, the, on, on the um, hand of um, these individuals in order to monitor the movement so that if they move within, uh, or let's say, outside of their homes, I believe that it will trigger a response and then the officials will be able to um, take action as appropriate. It is an extremely necessary tool to protect the population. And I want to encourage all Antiguans and Barbudans to respect that decision. Uh, what we're trying to do here is to manage the risk of um, community spread. And as I said, right now, we have a potential issue on our hands. I mean, if we end up with a significant amount of positive tests from the 166 tests that we just sent off to CAFO. You can imagine, um, you know, the, the, the type of nightmare we'll have. In fact, if there are more positive tests, then there'll be more, um, more contact tracing, more quarantining, more businesses to be closed, more government departments, obviously, um, with isolated persons. And again, you know, when you have um, to take out so many people, out of the service of a particular business or department, it affects the department. I mean, many of you would have noticed, for example, at um, ABS that they had a new person um, reading the news last evening, a single person. It's because um, several of the staff there are in quarantine. Uh, yeah, the CIP as well, we have a few um, individuals there who have been quarantined, affecting the service. And it's happening all over. I mean, it's your tourism as well. They have had some exposure. Uh, so I cannot overemphasize how important it is for us to, all of us, you know, every citizen, every resident, to remain vigilant and to continue to uphold 
or to adhere to the protocols because they work. In fact, one of the individuals who is COVID positive, I'm told that that person was so irresponsible that um, person did not even use a mask. I mean, I do understand, you know, after all the months of um, preaching to our people the need for them to wear a mask, and it is well known that the mask helped to reduce the viral load, viral load of the amount of um, COVID particles someone could um, inhale in the event you, you know, you come in close contact with um, with someone who is COVID positive. I mean, I don't know why individuals will be so obstinate to be literally refusing to wear a mask. The mask works. There's no doubt about it. I mean, you know, everyone has, you know, his or her constitutional rights. But your constitutional rights can't take precedent to the health of the population. And if you by virtue of your, uh, let's say, indisciplined um, action, um, you know, decide that you don't wish to wear a mask, then clearly there will be consequences. So we've just asked um, law enforcement to step up and to make sure that they enforce the protocols. I believe we've also strengthened the, um, the regulations to allow for an increase in the fines for certain individuals who continue to violate the protocols. And uh, even those, for example, whenever the contact tracing is done, that they give false information, that now constitutes um, an offense and obviously is punishable um, by a fine. And I believe they may, may want two adjustments that we made just to make sure that, um, you know, we make it a little more punitive for individuals who are irresponsible and uh, literally put the entire population at risk.